All right, and we're back. So we're going to do one more example. Sorry, that wasn't as smooth a transition as I would have hoped, but here we go. So we're going to have uh, our function now being just a root function, but it's not going to be as simple as the square root like you saw in class we had before, just the square root of x. Now we're going to put something else inside of it. We'll just make it slightly more complicated by making it a line underneath. Um, so again, like before, the first thing that we're going to find after being given our original function um, is f of x plus h. We're going to compose x plus h into our original function. So we have f of x plus h equaling the square root of 4 times x plus h plus 1, which is 4x plus 4h plus 1. And then we go straight to our definition and see if we can simplify this, this business down. So f of x plus h, I've distributed 4, minus f of x, all divided by h. I mentioned something in class today about multiplication by conjugates. Um, so I can give a, a brief introduction here about something related. A review rather, not an introduction. So when we have a difference of squares, right, something squared minus something squared, we can always write that as this factorization first thing that is squared minus the second thing that is squared, the first thing minus the second thing, the first thing plus the second thing. If you FOIL this out, you can confirm that you do get this. I mentioned in class this technique for taking something like this, right, where you've got roots and a difference of roots. That looks a lot like this, and what we want to do to make this easier, perhaps, is to get rid of roots. Um, this is a common theme in, in these problems where with roots. You want to eliminate them. You rationalize denominators or you find derivatives by multiplying by something that gets rid of these roots. Um, in order to do that, if you have a piece of this product, all you need to do is reintroduce the next product or the next factor. So here, A is, is this radical, f of x plus h. B is this radical, f of x. We've got the difference. So we're going to multiply by f of x plus h plus f of x. But doing something like that sort of changes what you have, right? So you want to undo that change that you did. You want to eventually not change a thing, right? So you multiply by 1 instead of multiplying by something that's not 1. The way you do that is just multiply and divide by that thing. So here we've got a plus b, and we're dividing it by a plus b. That's multiplication by 1. So it doesn't change what the values are here at all. It's going to change what they look like, but it's not going to change them. So, I just erased the nice little feature that we have. This becomes this squared. That's the undoing of that square root. Minus this squared. It's going to be all divided by h times this sum. I'm going to leave it like this. On top, we have some really nice cancellations that take place here. We've got a 4x minus a 4x, so those are gone. We've got a 1 minus a 1, so those are gone. And fortunately for me, I don't have anything left over here, so I cannot forget this negative sign like I did last time. So we have just 4h on top. But we also have something else on bottom. We've got a factor of h here. 
So we've got h times something on bottom, and we've got 4 times h on top, which means that this leftover h can cancel with this h. Right? Up top, all we have is just 4 times h, so we can cancel that factor of h from bottom and from top. We're left with just 4 divided by f of x plus h, which is root 4x plus 4h plus 1, plus f of x, which is just root 4x plus 1. And we're pretty close to the end here. Um, now, you know, we've done a lot of algebra, some simplifications and multiplication by the conjugates here. Now we just ask ourselves, can we find this limit, right? Along the way, you should always be asking yourself, can I find that limit? If not, rearrange. Ask yourself again. If not again, rearrange over and over. You do this iterative process. I can tell you the limit of 4 as h goes to 0. It's 4. Can you tell me this limit as h goes to 0? And is it 0 itself? Well, let's see. 4x doesn't depend on h. 4h does, and that goes to 0. Plus 1. 1 stays at 1. You can pass limits underneath roots. So we can take the limit of this root just like we could take the root of this limit. Okay. This has no h in it at all. So this we're fine with. Okay, so we can find this root plus root limit. We can take the limit of this, which means now we can apply that quotient rule for limits. We just take the limit of the top. divided by the limit of the bottom, which, like I said, we can pass into the roots if needed. Um, so I'm going to do that for this first one. So this is the root of that limit plus the limit, here I'm using the sum rule, and I'm not going to bring it into that root because there's no h in there, so I'm not going to be even concerned with it. The limit of a constant is that constant. The limit of things which do not depend on the limiting variable here is just those things. They're basically constants themselves. And this one, well, the limit of 4x, so that stays 4x. There's no h there. The limit of 4h goes to 0 because h goes to 0. The limit of 1 stays 1 because it's a constant. So this is the radical, the root of, rather, 4x plus 1. That's what. Which gives us our result. Two of the same thing added together. All right, so we have two roots of 4x plus 1 in the denominator. So this will cancel out with the 2 that we get here, which just brings us to 2 over the root of 4x plus 1. Again, the 4 cancels with the 2 that we get from having the 2 times the root of 4x plus 1. Okay, and that's it. That's the derivative of the square root of 4x plus 1. Okay, um, and that's it for this problem, I think. Nothing else to say. Um, I'll do one more. These aren't taking very long, so I'll pick another one and I'll be right back.